a blessed and a glorious Christmas life giver. We have a wonderful Savior that has come into the world to save all of His lovely children. Ngayong magang ito, papupurihan natin ang Panginoong Diyos. It is rightful that we come and adore our King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. Halina po, let's worship the Lord.
magnify and worship your name. Lord, who are we that you removed your sonship, Lord God? You being king over everything. Hari ka po niyan sa, sa kalangitan, Panginoong Diyos. Pero bumaba ka sa lupa. Para kami, Panginoong Diyos, ay masalba. Ganun mo kami kamahal. Ganun kadakila ang iyong pagmamahal sa amin. O Lord Jesus, who are your children? Who are we, Lord God, that you should be so mindful of us? Everything was under your feet, but you chose to be born in a manger and be like man. You reached out to us, Lord God. That's why it is just so right for all of your children. Lahat po kami, Panginoong Diyos. Lahat po ng mga nasa kanilang kanilang tahanan. Ang magbigay ng pinakamataas na papuri sa iyo. Karapat dapat ka lang po, Panginoon. Tawagin namin, Hari ng mga hari. Diyos na aming pinakapupuri. Sasambahin ka namin ngayon, We will magnify and glorify your name, O Lord, and adore you with the highest praise. Receive it. Receive it, Lord. The universe is at your feet.
Happy Holidays, Life Giver family! I am Marielle Enriquez from Life Giver BGC. It is an honor to be in front of you right now to share the greatness of God in my life. It was 2010 when I learned about the principle of first fruit. When you open your Bibles in Leviticus 23 verse 10, it says there, When you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a shift of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. You know what? The concept of the first fruit is rooted in biblical times when people live in an agrarian society. Because that was the time when the hard work of the farmers had poured into their crops all year is begun to pay off. They were literally reaping what they saw. Ang Hebrew word po ng first fruit ay bikurim, which is literally translated a promise to come. Say it with me, a promise to come. Alam niyo po ba, the Israelites saw that this first fruit as an investment in their future. Because God told them that if they bring their first fruit to Him, He will bless all that come afterwards. Alam niyo po, hindi man tayo namumuhay in an agrarian-based society right now, but the idea of first fruit is still relevant. Hindi, man, hindi nga lang siya literal na fruit talaga. Meron na siyang ibang meaning sa panahon ngayon. First fruits, it can be any income, wealth, or blessing a Christian received or has received on the first month of the year. Tingnan po natin sa Bible. Let's open our Bible in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. It says there, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. God instructs, instructed the Israelites to give off their first fruit or their first crop para po maintindihan nila yung value of God's blessing. These are also great opportunity to turn back to God in gratitude of the blessing. Making first fruit offering opens up and allow God to work in our life because when we approach God with open hands rather than a clenched fist, it's make, it makes Him easier to work with us. Also, every time that we give our first fruit, it reminds us that God is our ultimate priority. And it shows that we are obedient to Him and we trust Him more. Perhaps more importantly, being generous in this way shows that we are grateful for all that God has given to us. Brothers and sisters, it's been 11 years that I've been practicing this kind of giving. And true enough, may pangako na darating. It has a promise to come. God has been blessing me tremendously above and beyond of what I have expected. 2010 has been remarkable to me. As we know, we are still in pandemic. You know what? I didn't hesitate to give my first fruit because in hindsight, I know God will provide. God has a promise and it will come. Aside po from the whole year-round protection and provision for my family, this year, God has blessed me to have a multiple, multiple source of income. I unexpectedly receive a favor to get a side hustle in which apart from the fact that if it gives me a high pay, it was a big dream that came true for me. Because this is one of my dream jobs. I was the youngest senior client services manager ever promoted given that I only have five years of operational experience comparing to the others who already have 10 years 
experience as a director. It was all God's favor and grace. And apart from that, 2019, I was able to buy my own house in Latin Laguna. And just this year, God already God also answered one of my prayer. I was able to buy my own condo here in Paranaque. My savings increased and I became God's channel of blessing to my family. The blessings and opportunity that God has given me are only listed way back on all my prayer requests every year that I give my first fruit offering. Indeed, God is faithful when you remain faithful and obedient to Him. If you will ask me, kulang po ang airtime na ibinigay sa akin to share with you and to share to you how the Lord answers all my prayers at patuloy niya pa pong sinasagot yung mga panalangin ko. Whenever I give my sacrificial offering, I believe there is a promise to come. That's why I want to challenge you, Life Giver family. Whenever you decide to make a first fruit offering, the important thing that you need to do, you need to do it freely. It should be with no guilt or obligation. This is still supposed to be a celebration of all that God has done for us. A first fruit offering is our opportunity to give above and beyond just a regular tithes and offering. So I, what are you waiting for? I am all excited for all your testimonies on how the Lord blessed me. Again, I am Marielle Enriquez and I am blessed in giving. Happy giving, church!
Maligayang Pasko po sa inyo pong lahat. Maligayang maligayang Pasko sa ating mga kapatiran. Sa Life Giver na ngayon ay nagtatamasa ng biyaya, awa at habag ng ating Panginoon. Ang kanyang pagmamahal sa loob ng two years. Ito na yata po ang huling-huling Pasko ng, uh, I pray, ng COVID. At the next year ay magtatamasa tayo ng isang COVID-free na bansa. So, maligayang maligayang Pasko po sa inyo pong lahat. Batiin natin ang ating katabi, ang ating magulang, tatay, ating mga kaibigan, ang hap, uh, Merry Merry Christmas. Ayan, very good. Sige po, batiin ang bawat isa. At ngayon, ay meron tayong napakagandang topic. Na topic ko na ito eh. Hindi naman nakakatakot at uh, nakakahinayang ulitin. No? Sapagkat ang life giver naman ay sadyang palaaral ng salita ng Diyos. Ano? And today, pag-uusapan po natin, sa 2021, ito, Pasko, araw ng Pasko, ay ang pangalang Emmanuel. Sabay-sabay nga tayo lahat, Emmanuel. <clears throat> At ang ating text ay magagaling sa Isaiah 7.14, 700 years. Ito, bago ipangalak ang ating Panginoon, ay meron ng sadyang hula para sa kanya. A prophecy was given by Isaiah, one of, a great, uh, one of the greatest seers of the nation Judah. Tignan natin, Isaiah 7.14 Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Yan, kausap ng Panginoon dito. Kausap ng Panginoon dito uh, sa pamamagitan na Isaiah, si Ahaz. Little background po, bakit ito lumabas? Bakit ang binigay na sign? Kay Ahaz o Ahaz ay kapanganakan ng Panginoon. Ang binigay na sign sa kanya ay ang Christmas. Pero bago ang lahat, let's pray. Lord, itong huling taon, ilang huling linggo ng taong 2021, dumaan kami sa pagsubok, matinding sakuna sa buong bansa ang naganap. Pero binigyan mo kami ng protection. And in line with that protection, Lord God, kami po ay Sadyang pinagpala mo. You have blessed our church so much. Life giver is so blessed. Blessed with people, with great people who love God so much. Who love to adhere with spiritual virtues. Kung ano ang character ng scripture ay ina-adapt. Hindi namin tinotolerate ang mali. At higit sa lahat, hindi kami pumapatol sa anumang bagay na alam namin hindi bahagi ng aming calling. Kaya so bin less one church ng maraming bagay, ng mga leaders, ng mga life groups, at ng mga givers. At kami ay sadyang nakakita ng milagro ng protection sa iyo nitong panahon ng COVID. And today, hayaan mong sariwain namin, celebrate ang Christmas sa pamamagitan mo, Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Emmanuel. Yan ang pag-uusapan. Emmanuel. So, ang background po kasi ng galito, kausap ni Isaiah si Ahaz. At ang sabi ni Lord kay Ahaz, kasi ini-invade siya ng dalawang, nag, dalawang bansa ang nag-alliance eh. Alam niyo, po ba, alam niyo po ba yung alliance? Alliance is yung alalang yan. Yun, ganun. So, dalawa ang nag-alliance para talunin ang Juda. Ang nakakalungkot, yung isa, kapatid niya. Kapatid ni Judah yung lumalaban sa kanya. Yan. Pangalawa, sumama pa at kumuha pa ng isang hari by the name of Aram, ano, mga Aramites. Uh, Damascus, ibig sabihin Syria. So nag-join force upang labanan ang Judah. At yun na. At uh, pinuntahan ng Panginoon si Ahaz 
sapagat si Ehas na malamang sila ay binibisid, pinaliligiran na ng kalaban, eh, takot at takot. Takot, takot, takot la ang lakat. Nangyayari naman sa atin yan, natatakot tayo sa mga, sa panglilibak, natatakot tayo sa pagbabash sa atin. Nangyayari yan, kahit sa Facebook, sa Instagram, hindi tayo makakaiwas. Misa natatakot tayo. Ganoon ang nangyayari sa kanila, natatakot sila, ano ang mangyayari, matatalo ba sila, ayan. So, dumating ang Panginoon, kay Ehas through Isaiah, at may katigasan ng ulo si Ehas na ayaw paniwalaan si Isaiah. At ang sagot ng Panginoon sa kanya, baka gusto mo humingi ng sign. Mananalo ka ba? Sabi niya, mananalo ka. Ang sabi niya sa verse 7, Thus says the Lord, Isaiah 7, 7, uh, It shall not stand, nor shall come to pass. Sabi niya, yung pananakot sa iyo na tatalunin ka, na ikaw ay sisirain bilang bansa, sabi niya, hindi mangyayari yun. Sabi niya, it, it, will not ka, it, it will not come to pass, nor shall come to pass. Sabi niya, ganon. It shall not stand. Nangyayari po ba sa inyo yan na tinetret yung negosyo nyo, tinetret kayo, tinetret kayo ng galinto, ng ganyan, tinatakot kayo ng galinto, tinatakot kayo ng ganyan. Sabi ng Panginoon, wala, wala yan. Sabi niya, wala yan. Yung alliance nila, ditong dalawa na kalaban mo, alliance nila, alayan. Yun sinasabi niya. And it will not, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 9, letter B, if you will not believe, you surely shall not last. Pag hindi ka naniwala, ikaw, ikaw mapapahamak dito. So ang ginawa sa kanya ng Panginoon, sabi niya, sabi na Isaiah, gusto mo bigyan kita ng, uh, ng sign? Ng, uh, ng, ano, ng confirmation? Para malaman mo, poproteksyon na ka ng Panginoon? Sabi niya, you ask God for a sign. Same sa atin. Lord, ano, na, na, uh, itong COVID, ano ba mangyayari? Give us your sign. Itong 2021, give us your sign. I have a good news to all of you. 2021, 22, tough pa rin, mabigat pa rin ang pagsubok natin, but kasama natin ang Panginoon. God will be joining us next year. Nag-join siya sa atin two years ago, ngayon din taon na ito, he still, he will be joining us for the next year. And it will be a very spectacular year for us, for the family. Since grabe ang nangyayari po sa atin, ang dami nating bagong mga kapatid, at the moment nagkita-kita tayo sa Project Solomon, ang Project Solomon natin, ang permit ay umuusad na, that's the good news, wag na matakot, umuusad, at anytime mag start po tayo, God is so good. Amen? Can we bless life giver po, Project Solomon? Bless Project Solomon. Amen? Yan. So, yun niya, humihingi siya ng sign. At ang sign, sabi ng Panginoon, ayun na. Ang sabi sa kanya, verse 7, chapter 7, verse 10 to 11. At tignan natin yung ating screen. Sabi rito, as a sign for yourself from the Lord, your God. Make it deep. Uh, as shoal or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, no, will I test the Lord. Ayaw humingi ni Ahaz ng sign. Pero ang sagot sa kanya ng Panginoon, humingi ka ng sign. At alam mo, ang binigay sa kanya ng sign ni Lord, yung sign ng Christmas. Ang sign ng Christmas ay ibinigay sa isang mayabang na hari na ayaw humingi ng tulong sa Diyos. Nakaya ko to. Sapagkat ang plano niya yata, ayan na. At yun na nga nangyari. The sign was fulfilled in chapter 8. Sabi niya, I'll give you the sign. Ang sign niya, mapupulfilled kay Christ, pero a year after puno na fulfilled. Sapagkat yung asawa ni Isaiah ay nagbigay ng birth, gave birth to Maher Shalal Hashbash. Yan. At ano po ang nangyari? Sabi ng Panginoon, bago makapagsalita yung bata, may mangyayari doon sa dalawa na kalaban mo. Alam mo ang ginawa ng Panginoon doon sa dalawang umaaway kay Judah, kay Ehas, kinuha po ng isang malaking bansa at doon na po itinapon. Fuh. At ano binigay sa Israel? Ah, sa, that Israel. Sa Judah? Eh, sabi niya, I'll give you the sign. What is the sign? Mali ako. Who is the sign? The sign is Emmanuel. What is Emmanuel? Emmanuel means God is with 
us. Ayan. Na-fulfilled po ito. Fully fulfilled in Matthew 1, 700 years before, after Christ, after the prophecy fulfilled in Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Punta na din. This is how the birth of Jesus, Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph's husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her publicly or public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Naku! But after he had considered this, nakialam na ang anghel. Ganyan eh. Alam mo, kapag anak ka ng Diyos at parang tumatakas ka sa calling mo, makikialam ang anghel. So ano nangyari? Sabi rito, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Hindi ito intervention ng lalaki, hindi ka nalusutan. Ito ay galing sa Holy Spirit. Wow! Ang sarap naman no? kung mapapangasawa mo eh, na buntis dahil sa intervention ng Panginoon. Ha? Verse 21, She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. That's the calling of the Father. He was given the task to give name to the firstborn child. And so sabi niya ganun, Joseph, ikaw magbibigay ng pangalan. Ang pangalan ng bata will be Jesus because he will, be, he will save his people from their sins. So as far as Israel is concerned, Jesus, because they will be saved. As far as mankind is concerned, Jesus, because Jesus will be their salvation. But, sabi dito, 22, and all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. Isaiah, siya sabi dito, the virgin, natin, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Sabay sabay nga, God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. Then he took Mary as his wife and then he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. That's the name, Jesus. But the whole message of Christmas is Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, ayan na po, di na natin mabuti. So Emmanuel, makikita natin dito, Emmanuel means, what is the meaning of Emmanuel? Dito yata, yan, Emmanuel, ang ibig sabihin ng Emmanuel means God is with us. Three, three confounded words under the name Emmanuel. God, El, Manuel. Emmanuel, o Emmanuel. Ayan, three confounded words under the name Emmanuel. Nang ibig sabihin is God is with us. So ngayon, pag-uusapan natin ngayon, yan ang message ng Christmas, Emmanuel or Emmanuel. So let's get the meaning. There are three important meaning na kailangan natin makita. At yun ang message ng Pasko. Okay? Una-una is that, ako na, yung una-una, kailangan maintindihan natin na yung name na Emmanuel is a powerful name. It's a powerful name. Hindi lang may message yung Emmanuel, pero may power yung pangalan ng Emmanuel kasi yun ang magiging mission, uh, mission ng Panginoon bilang Emmanuel. Number two, it's the most comforting message of God. So what is the meaning? Ano yung comfor comforting message of the name Emmanuel? God is with us. God with us. God with us, revealed in us, His name is called Emmanuel. So most uh, powerful name, most comforting message, and last, a very timely message. A very timely message. Napapanahon yung message. Katulad natin, napapanahon ang mensahe. So let's get the meaning. Are you excited? Let's get the meaning. Number one, the meaning of Emmanuel is that God became flesh. God became, yan, God became flesh. Sa Tagalog, naging tao ang Diyos. Yan, naging tao ang Diyos. 
Ang pinakamatinding word na yan, na paborito dapat nating mga Kristiyano, ay the word incarnation. Ayan, incarnation. Ayan, incarnation. Ang tanong ng iba, ano ba yan? Condense or iba? Gatas po yun. Incarnation, ang ibig sabihin, nagkatawang tao, made flesh. Ayan, made flesh. Nagkatawang tao na. Ayan, nagkatawang tao. Okay? Nagkatawang tao ang Diyos. Para ipakita ng nagkatawang tao siya, ito po, can we go to John 1.14? Sabi ng John 1.14, the Word became flesh. In the big, uh, uh, and made this dwelling among us. Ayan. We have seen His glory and the glory of the one only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Sa Tagalog, sabi ni, Pap, ni John, at ang salita ay nagkatawang tao. Yun yung word na incarnation, nagkatawang tao. Sino ang nagkatawang tao? Si salita, si, si verbo ay nagkatawang tao. Nagkatawang tao na ang Panginoon. So, saan galing itong nagkatawang tao? Ano ba yung nagkatawang tao? Makukuha natin yan sa John 1, 1 to 3. Tingnan natin mabuti. John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, itong si Word na ito, nung araw pa, si Word na siya. Itong salita na ito, nung araw pa, si salita na siya. At ang salita na ito, ay kasama ng Diyos. At ang salitang ito ay Diyos. Verse 2, He was with God in the beginning. Pinapakita rito yung pre-incarnate o pre-existence ni Christ pala. Pre-existence. Sabi rito na from the beginning pa siya. In the beginning. At yung salitang in the beginning niya, makikita natin sa Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. At itong beginning na ito, itong God na ito in the beginning, ay nag-e-exist na mula pa sa umpisa ng lahat. And through Him, sinabi na kung sino itong verbo na ito, ang salita, okay? Through Him, all things were made, and without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Lahat ng bagay na nakikita ninyo at hindi nyo nakikita ay nalika dahil kay verbo, salita, na verse 14, na nagkatawang tao. So Jesus, the message of Christmas, Emmanuel, is that God who has become human. God, yun na, God has become human. God is with us expresses the wonder of the incarnation. Ayan. That God became flesh and made dwelling among us. Incarnation means flesh. Laban. Became flesh. Naging laman. Ayan. So lumalabas na yung pagkakatawang tao ni Jesus sa pamamagitan ng Pasko, isang araw, Pasko, ay magkakatawang taong Panginoon ay isa sa pinakamalaking proyekto ng Panginoon. Ang pagbubuntis ni Maria ay malaking proyekto ng Diyos. At ang maging tao si Jesus sa tiyan ng isang babae ay ang pinakamalaking proyekto ng Diyos. This is the grandest of all the miracles recorded in the Bible. The greatest pinakamataas. At ang salitang Emmanuel o ang pangalang Emmanuel, okay, is a protective, is a prophetic name and prophecy of the birth of the incarnate God. Emmanuel, sabihin, yung Diyos, anak, magkakatawang tao na. Kasama natin ang Diyos. Sabihin, magkakatawang tao siya. Sasama na sa atin. So, una, God, uh, God who has become flesh, or human, and next is God took the risk of being human. At nung palahon na ito ni John, pinag-aargumentohan ng buong Hellenistic world. Yun yung mundo nung araw. Ang pangalan niya, Hellenistic. Punong-puno ng kaalaman at ang dami-daming reasons, logic, studies, theories na pinag-uusapan nung araw. At isa sa pinaka pinakantaw natin dito, pinaka- uh, viral na pinag-uusapan nung panahon na yon is si Logos. 
si word, si verbo. Sino daw si verbo? Sino sabi nila si verbo is the one controlling the entire universal system. Ba si verbo daw yun? At si verbo daw ang nakatagong intelligence na nagpo-control ng isip ng buong tao. Kaya meron silang word dyan, tinatawag nilang uh, isper, Logoi Spermaticus, pinakamataas na kaalaman na nagpo-control ng lahat nito. So yun ang paniniwala ng Hellenistic world. Sumagot so, si John. Ah, gusto niyo makilala kung sino si Word? Siya si Jesus. Si Viral na pinag-uusapan yung kaalaman na nagpo-control ng buong universe. Sabi ni, sabi ni John, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yan. At itong Word na ito, sabi nito, letter B, next, is God took the risk of being human. Maging tao. Mabigat ito. Si Berbo, magkakatawang tao. Sasama na sa atin si Berbo. Nakuha mo? Kaya pag pinuntahan natin, bigyan ko ng three verses, hindi na natin dadaanan, pero bigay ko muna, 1 Corinthians 15, 21-22, na ang kasalanan ay dumating sa mamamagitan ng isang tao. So kung sino man ang magiging tao, tatamaan ng kasalanan ng tao na yon Ang tinutukoy na tao sa 1 Corinthians 15, 21-22 ay si Adam. So kung magiging part ka ng, ng Adamic race, yung kasalanan ni Adam, kasalanan mo rin. Ang taas ng race, para ang Diyos ay magkatawang tao at sa linya ni Adan, at sa linya rin ni Abraham, at ni ni ano ni David. Ibig sabihin, ipanganganak si Christ na may kasalanan na naggaling sa kanyang kay Adan. Yun yung sinasabi ng first Corinthians. So, batas ang race. Bata ko, bakit kukunin ang Diyos na maging project niya ang makasama ang tao? Nasa langit ako, nasa lupa kayo, eh, okay na yun. Pero sumama pa ako sa inyo, eh, sobra naman kayo. Pwedeng ganun, di ba? Pangalawa, sasali pa ba ako sa inyo? Baka mahawa niyo pa ako? That's the risk. Romans 3.23, another risk is that for all have sinned, fall short. Ibig sabihin, Jesus, if, if the verbo will become human and so, the verbo will become part of human race. And, and it's stated here in Romans 3.23, I think galing din to sa Psalm, that all have sinned. Isaiah, ganun din ang sinasabi, all have sinned, fall short. Ibig sabihin, magiging makasalanan si Jesus. Ang taas ng risk. Diyos na banal ay magkakatawang tao para mag-share. Mag, mag Hindi lang ng infirmity ng tao, sakit ng tao, topak ng tao, o... Uh, tantrums ng tao, o moods ng tao, o sorry for the word, ka ka ng tao, o ka kawala ng isip ng tao. Another verse will be 1 Corinthians 15.22. For as in Adam all die, and so in Christ all will be made alive. So another risk will be, Christ will be experiencing the last nature of men, and that is death. Very risky. God, o took, Diba? A form of a man will die like a man. Ano naman? Bigat nun. And let, next. So, mabigat yung risk. Mataas yung risk ng pagiging human being. Pwede ang Diyos ay mahawaan pa ng kasalanan ng tao. Pero kinuha ni Jesus yung risk. Pasko. Pasko ay kukunin ko yung risk na maging tao. Next is it was joined with the appearances of angels. Okay? Yun na. At sinamahan na. Just to protect the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, yung birth ni Christ, makikita natin yan sa Luke, ay lumabas ang pinakamalaking bilang ng anghel. Kung tawagan yan ay myriads. Myriads or myriads. Yan, myriads of angels appeared. The appearance of Gabriel in two series of talk with Mary and Elizabeth. And the three and a half years of earthly ministry was also the ministry of the angels. Kaya nung nakatawang tao si Jesus, pinakamakapal na appearances at occurrences ng angels ang naitala sa kasaysayan. Higit pa sa Old Testament na mga occurrences o appearances ng mga, ng mga angels. What's the lesson? Point number one. Christmas, Emmanuel, hindi lang kaya ng Diyos gumawa ng tao, naging tao siya, para sa tao. Hindi lang niya kaya, hindi lang kaya ng Diyos gumawa ng tao, 
naging tao siya para sa tao. Next, naging tao siya upang iligtas ang tao sa kanyang kasalanan. Naging tao siya upang iligtas ang tao sa kasalanan. And number three, naging tao siya upang hindi nating sabihin, hindi ko na kaya. Naging tao na ako, huwag mo sabihin yan. <laughs> Lahat ng mga human excuses ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, naging tao ako. Kaya nyo yan. Amen? Second message, so second meaning of Emmanuel. So unang-una is nagkatawang tao siya. God became flesh. Number two, God lives with us. Another meaning of Emmanuel is that God lives in us. Si Jesus ay, ang Diyos ay pumanaog at nanahan na sa atin. Na Tagalog, siya ay namumuhay na ang Diyos kasama natin. John 1.14, balikan ko ulit. The Word became flesh and lived, made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who became flesh from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Grabe, at naging nagkatawang tao na ang laman, ang, ang salita, at namuhay. Ayan, ang ganda nun. At nanina, nanirahan, sumama, nakipising sa atin, nakisama na ang Diyos sa atin. Ayan. If you go to John 2.11, ang sabi, What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee, was the first of the signs to which He revealed His glory and His disciples believe in Him. Ano ba yung Cana? Yung paglabas ng alak mula sa tubig. Natangin Diyos lang ang makagagawa na mangha ang lahat sa Cana. At ang miracle na ito, nagpapatunay, nakasama na talaga natin ang Diyos. As a matter of fact, kamag-anak pa nga nung mag-asawa, ang gumawa ng pinakamalaking milagro. Wala hong kayang gumawa na ang alak, na ang tubig ay maging alak. Wala hong makakagawan. Liban ang ating Panginoon. At yun po ay nagsasalita tungkol sa kanyang pagiging misyas, slash, uh, misyas at pagiging Diyos. So, yun na. So, tanong muna, Bishop, saan ba nakatira ang Diyos noong araw sa Old Testament? I'll give you some verses to prove kung saan nakatira ang Diyos. Unang-una, Exodus 25.11. Sabi rito, then, uh, then have made, uh, uh, then have them, have them make a sanctuary for the, for me, and I will dwell among them. So una una, para sumama sa angels, gawo mo siya ng sanctuary, kasi sa sanctuary titira, at dun kayo magpanagpo. So una una, hindi titira ang tao sa tao, ang Diyos sa tao, kundi titira siya sa isang templo, whether tabernacle or peding templo, o peding tabernakulo, o peding templo, pedi yon. Okay? So, sa Old Testament, nakatira ang Diyos sa sanctuaryo. Pero hindi na dumating ang Panginoong Isa Kristo. Bagamat, maraming record na si Jesus ay dumadalaw sa templo. At nung panahon ni Jesus ay may isang permanenting templo at may isang lumalakad na templo. John 1.14 Hindi nila akalain na papanaog ang Diyos titira sa atin. Kaya pag binalikan mo yung 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling, ayun na, make His dwelling among us. At dahil nakatira na ang Panginoon sa atin, sabi dito, we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the flesh, full of grace, full of truth. Another verse will be John 1.18. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. So, ibig sabihin, itong Diyos na ito, pag sinabi natin, bugtong na anak ng Diyos, ang sinasabi doon, kung gaano siya kalapit, kaklose sa Diyos. Tinapakita kung gaano siya kaklose sa Father. At kung sino pa yung napaka-close sa Father, yun ang pumanaog para tumira kasama mo sa bahay mo, sa silid mo, 
maging sa kwarto mo, maging sa buhay mo, at maging sa katawan mo. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, ang ating katawan ay ginawang tirahan ng banal na Espiritu Santo. What a great message. Christmas is an announcement. God who is living there in heaven, okay, now is living with us, among us. Nung araw, para makita mo ang Diyos, mag-a-appear sa'yo, anghel. Ang ibibigay sa'yo, miracle. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, actual miracle at actual appearances ng anghel. Bakit makapal ang appearances ng anghel ng panahon ni Jesus? Bakit? Ang trabaho ng serapim, proteksyonan ng trono ng Diyos. Ang trabaho ng kerubim ay proteksyonan ang presence ng Diyos. E ang Diyos ay nasa lupa. Ang kapal ng appearance ng serapim at ang kapal ng appearances ng alin? Ng kerubim. Amen? Kaya dapat talaga tigil-tigilan natin maging devil conscious. Dinimonyo ako. Dinimonyo ako. Inargabyado ako. Pinagtulong-tulungan ako. Wala wala ka mararamdamang anghel diyan. Okay? Kaya nga ang mga Christian na tunay ay makaka-experience ng breakthrough of appearances of angels. I believe in that. I believe na ang proteksyon ng Panginoon, ang presensya ng Panginoon, ang dwelling place ng Panginoon ay nasa atin na. Kaya ang actual glory ng Ama bumaba sa pamamagitan ni Jesus at nakatira sa atin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, saan nakatira? Sa puso natin. Sa pagkatao natin. Sa katawang lupa natin nakatira ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Hindi ako may sabi niyan, ang may sabi niyan ng Bible, kung ayaw niyo maniwala sa akin, then hindi kayo maniniwala sa scripture. Good news, pumanaog na ang Diyos at sumama sa atin. So what is the message? Okay, what's the lesson? The lesson is here, is this, nagdesisyon siya na maging tao upang makasama at manahan sa ating pagkatao. Mga kapatid, kahit gaano pa kakapal ang demonyo, nakatira sa atin ang Panginoon. May mga nakatira sa iyo na pinakamahalagang persona sa balat ng lupa, ilantag mo siya at ipakita. May nakatira sa iyo na pinakamahalagang persona sa balat ng lupa, ilantad mo siya at ipakita mo siya. Number three. Number three. Puri ng Panginoon Diyos. Paproteksyonan ng Diyos ang bahay na kanyang tinitirhan, iingatan, pupunuin, pagagandahin, at lilinisin. Kamda. Picture niyo yun. And number four, ang pinakamahal na kondo sa buong mundo ay ang tao na nakatira si Yeso Kristo. Ang pinakamahal na kondo sa buong mundo ay ang tao na nakatira si Yeso Kristo. Amen? Hallelujah. Palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoon. Puri ng Panginoon Diyos. Hallelujah. Next, third point, meaning of Emmanuel. Ano ulit, ano ulit yung meaning ng Emmanuel? Nakita natin, number two, God lives with us na mumuhay ang Diyos kasama natin, at ang number one is that God became flesh, naging tao ang Diyos. Tapos, tumira na, bumaba na, at nanaog na sa atin ang Panginoon. Number three, number three, and this is the last, God's protection now is in us. God's protection now is in us. Sa Tagalog, iingatan tayo ng Diyos. The message of Christmas is God's protection is evident in our life. It means, it meant protection of God from the coming invasion. Balikan ko lang si Ahaz, ini-invade siya ng dalawa eh. Yung isa kapatid niya, Israel, Judah, Israel, magkapatid yun. Ini-invade siya. Kumuha pa ng, ng pega na kalaban din nila para labanan siya. So what happened? Sabi ng Panginoon, nanganak yung asawa ni Isaiah. At nung nanganak yung asawa ni Isaiah, alam naman natin yung pangalan. So, okay, kuling ko, yung, so, na, kuling ko lang yung pangalan. Kuling na pangalan. Mahaba yung pangalan eh. Diba? Maher Shalal Hashbash. Yun ang pangalan. Sabi niya, bago makapagsalita yung pangalan, may mangyayari doon sa dalawa na nag-alliance. Okay? 
So ano nangyari? True enough, may nangyari doon sa dalawa. Imbis na invade nila ang Judah, sila po ang nawala sa mapa. Kinuha sila, tinanggal ng Assyria at inilayo sa malayo. Huh! Yun na. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 10 to 14 para makita natin. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign. Whether in deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. And then Isaiah said, Here now, house of David, I am among ng sign. It is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. What is the sign? The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So originally, the proclamation of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, was a sign to a stubborn king who doesn't want to ask for a sign. Ayaw humingi ng sign, ang yabang. Ang ganda nga nung sinabi niya eh. Parang biblical yung sinabi niya na, well, ayokong subukin ang Diyos. Ang ganda, parang it sounds very spiritual. Pero it's so mayabang. Super yabang. Ibig sabihin, Lord, wag kang makialam dito. Ayoko nung sign mo. Kaya namin to. Hihingi ako ng tulong. Sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, o oh, kundi lang kay David, yung tatay mo. Yan. So, yun ang sign. So, anong sign? Ang sign ay, ang Pasko ay sign ng protection ng Diyos. Kahit hindi niya hilingi, ang ginawa ng Panginoon, inupakan yung dalawang kaaway. At yung kanilang iniisip na imalign, i-besiege, konen, alipinin ang, ang Juda sa kanila nangyari. Huwag magpaplano ng paghihiganti kahit kanino, lalo na sa kapatid, lalo na sa kapwa mananampalataya. Kahit pag gaano pa sila karume sa tingin mo, at kahit pag gaano sila nagkasala sa iyo sa tingin mo, hindi dapat maghiganti. So ginawa ng Diyos, yung plano nila, yung bait nila, at maging yung plan nila of harm sa kanila ibinigay ng Diyos. At isa ito sa nakakatakot na pangyayari sa bansang Israel kasi hindi na sila nakabalik hanggang ngayon as a nation. Okay? So the coming of Christ in the flesh is God's greatest and the strongest protection. It's about protection. It's about protection. Okay? Because ipoprotect ka ni Lord sa mga tinatawag natin clear and present danger. The message of God, of Emmanuel, God is with, uh, with us, is all about protection. Siya sabi ng Panginoon, I'll protect you. Kaya pala, may isang tao na hindi kayang proteksyonan ni Lord. Yung mga tao ang primer proteksyonan niyo sarili niya. Ang mga tao na hindi pagtatanggol ng Diyos ay yung mga tao ang pinagtatanggol yung sarili nila. At hindi makakapaghiganti ang Diyos sa mga tao naghihiganti na sila. Hindi, don't do that. Kung alam mo ang Bible, huwag mong gawin yun. Kasi bakit? Sabagat ang Diyos ay Diyos ng proteksyon. At gagawa siya ng scheme para proteksyonan ka. Kaya pag pinunta mo ang Psalm 91, 1-16, to makakakita ka ng pinakamataas na statement ng promise ni Lord sa mga protect, na protection sa mga anak niya. At ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, sa Psalms 19, 91, 1-16, to Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Yung mga tao na gagawin siyang tirahan ng Diyos, ay mananahan sa ilalim ng kanyang pakpak at kanyang anino. I'll say, I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Sino, sino ang refuge mo? Hindi Assyria, hindi Babylon, hindi Egypt, hindi America, hindi kaibigan, hindi barkada. Sabi niya, He is my refuge. 
He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foul snare and from deadly pestilences. Ang mabibigat ito, wala akong control dito. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. Ito, tulog ka nang yayari ito eh. Sabi na niya, wag kang matulog. Wag kang matakot. Matulog ka. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand or... 10,000 at your right side or right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high God your dwelling, nag-decision ka na, Lord, ikaw na ang taguan ko. Pangalawa, Lord, ikaw na ang tirahan ko. Sabi niya, no harm will overtake you. No, disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Share ko lang po sa inyo. Nasa Dipolog City po ako. Punta ng Dapitan. Papabalik ng Dipolog. Namatay po yung bus namin. Sinasakyan. Hydraulic. Walang brake. Pag namatay ang makina. Dumaus-us pa atras po. First time ko po nag-experience. Kamay ng anghel dito po. Nasa likod po ako eh. Ginawa ng kamay ng anghel, inawakan yung ulo ko. Parang siyang bulak. Malambot. Parang mars, marshmallow. Ayan. Nilagay, ang ginawa po, nilagay po niya yung ulo ko at ang buong katawan ko doon sa aisle. Bumalandra po yung bus sa isang sanga upang hindi mahulog sa bangin. Andun po ako na. Buhay. Nangyari ito, 1986. Hindi ko po may, hindi ko makakalimutan. Na, na, natikman ko ang kamay ng anghel. Kaya nung araw, pag pinipicturan ang lahat ng ministry na ginagawa ko, lagi kong may pakpak na nag a sa bawat picture. Tsaka ako na-confirm na bawat gawain, nilaloho ka ni Lord sa akin, lagi may anghel. Lagi may anghel. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on a lion. And the cobra, you will trample the great lion and serpent because he loves. So lahat aapakan mo, pinakamababangis na hayop at hindi ka maano. 14, and because he loves me, says the Lord, I'll rescue him. I'll protect him. If he acknowledges my name, he will call on me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my Salvation, my Jesus. Salvation is Jesus. I'll show him my Jesus. That is salvation. Salvation is Jesus. But it, yung verse 14, 15, 16, si Lord po kumakanta sa'yo. Ang sinasabi niya, Mano po ni Nong, Mano po ni... Hindi po. Ang sinasabi po niya, Because you love me, Mahal mo ako, anak. Sabi niya, I will rescue you. This is Jesus talking directly to you. Kasi yung statement niya, yung trabaho niya, rescue, Jesus yun. I will protect him. I'll protect you. Jesus pa rin. Okay? For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Jesus. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. Jesus na naman yun. And honor him. At sabi ni Jesus sa iyo, and with long life, I will satisfy you. And I will show you my Jesus, my salvation, my protection, my, the ministry of rescue, the rescue mission that I'll be doing for the rest of your life. God's presence with us is man's protection that diminishes Satan's power over our life. The sting of Satan is no longer there. The presence, yes, and then pa rin. But the sting, no more there. Wala na, no longer there. I am free. I cannot avoid his presence. But I cannot avoid the sting of Satan. 
it's no longer there. I am completely free from the danger that Satan may inflict directly to me and to my family. But God's presence is with me because Emmanuel is here. Woo! Kaya as we celebrate Christmas for the closing of this year, purin ang Panginoon, remember Emmanuel. God manifested in the flesh. God dwells. God manifests in the flesh. God dwells among us. And God protects and continue to protect us. Hello? Kaya ano nangyari? After one year, naka, bago magsalita yung bata, bago magsabi ng tatay at saka nanay, basta yun, bago magsalita ng tatay at nanay, yung pong dalawang lumalaban kay Judah, kung ano po yung plano nila nangyari sa kanila at sila po ang nawala. Bakit mahal ng Panginoon ang kanyang mga anak? Nandiyo ba kayo? Lesson, pag iniingatan ka ng Diyos, wala nang makakagalaw sa iyo. Ito'y totoo at ito'y magkakatotoo. The meaning of Jesus is protection and salvation. Another lesson, this is the last, ang banta ng kalaban ay babalik sa kalaban, siya ang mapapahamak, at siya ang masasaktan. Mga kapatid, itong taong darating, let's be more forgiving, let's be more gracious, merciful, and loving. Let's extend help, lalo na po sa Cebu, sa ating mga kababayan na pahamak, tayo po ililikom ulit ng salapi, konting amount, in order makatulong, nga pala magpapatayo po tayo ng church po doon. At kami po yung nagpaplano na. Bishop, may, mayroon tayong ginagawa. Bishop, wala tayong pera. Hindi po excuse yun. Itong Pasko na ito at sa Pasko pang darating, tayo po ay magbibigay ng tulong at magmamahal sa kapo. Huwag natin po pansinin ang anumang gulo sa labas. Let's concentrate doing the task that has been given to us by God. Merry Christmas! and a prosperous new year to all of you. Can we all stand? Hallelujah. Sa lahat ng mga first-timers, new friends, pakisulat lang po, NF, sa, sa lahat ng nasa Facebook at sa lahat ng nasa Zoom. Kung kayo po ay nasa Zoom o nasa Facebook, type NF. Enter our connect room. The details of Zoom are flash on your screen. Tinan niyo po yan. At meron po kami prayer room. If you want to be prayed over by someone, our pastor are willing po to pray for you. Willing, more than willing, to pray for you and for your needs. Who knows? Na merong, uh, merong uh, regalo ang Diyos sa inyong lahat. We will go now to prayer. Can we all stand, raise our hands. Sa lahat ng first timers, follow my prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the reason for this season. I am now willing to submit my life under your care. You are now my Lord and you are now my Savior. Let me serve you. Lord, I want Life Giver to be my family. This is my second home. I'm safe here. This is a wonderful church and I want to grow with them. Lord, salamat po. Bless mo kami sa pangalan ni Jesus. Kung tinanggap mo si Jesus, si Jesus bilang Panginoon Tagapaglitas, isang mirakel ng kapanganakan ang naganap po sa inyo. Puntahan ang prayer room at ilang assistance sa mga pastors na igag-guide kayo sa bago nyo po yung journey. We will go now to the benediction. Woo! Naku, narinig na natin ang napakagandang diwa na raranasan natin ang, ang simoy ng hangin at ang diwa ng Pasko sa kapaligiran. Yung mga regalo po ninyo, huwag na niyong ibalot, sisirain din. Hallelujah. Salamat sa lahat ng prayers at salamat din po sa pagtulong ninyo sa Live Givers sa taong 2021. This is the last Sunday of the year 2021. Hindi na natin siya mababalik. Magre-reminish tayo dito pero hindi natin mababalik. Isang magandang kasaysayan. Nga pala, ang ganda ng taon ng Live Giver. Super ganda. Kasi lumitaw talaga yung values ng totoong Kristyanismo. Lumabas si Jesus sa ating lahat. Tama? 
ganda. Kaya, ako, ito ang pinakamagandang taon. Next year, great harvest. Raise your hands. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord shower you with His blessing and favor now and forever. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen and Amen. God bless you!